Oh, no, 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 you didn't. And I gotta tell you, hell half no fury over a YouTuber who's deciding to open up a can of oh, no, you didn't. Hey there, fellow minions of technology. My name is Tim Lee. Welcome to Legacy Studio. Love you too, you dork. You give the girl mochi and it's all downhill from there. Mochi doesn't even taste good. It's not sweet enough. I don't know what's wrong with my wife. She's broken. In today's video, we're going to do a follow-up on this little thing right here. This is the HCV 770 Panasonic camcorder. My thoughts have gotten a little bit more detailed on this, and I bring the notepad of shame on this thing. We're going to talk a little bit about what the pros and cons of this sucker are. So I've been doing my research in the price range of about three to four hundred bucks, which was roughly what I was willing to spend. I was looking for a good camera that was going to be good for streaming. If you guys don't know what I do, I do streamed videos, which means that everything that you're seeing here is recorded into my computer instead of into my cameras, because a lot of cameras die after a certain point in time, and I talk far longer than those cameras can stay afloat. So in saying that, everything records into my computer, so a clean HDMI out signal is incredibly important. And just recently I did a study on these guys. This is my Sony a6300 uh, I also had two a Sony a6000s where I found out that the quality just wasn't there for me It wasn't quite what I needed and because of that I decided I was going to sell my a6000s and find a camera that was suitable for the purpose And if you go online and you look up best streaming cameras You see an awful lot of things like this guy right here, which is a web camera uh, And you see a lot of other little things or expensive things things like Sony a7R3 or whatnot, and I can't afford stuff like that. But in that list was this, the Panasonic HC V770 camcorder. And I remember seeing a whole bunch of YouTubers that I love watching every single day making videos using these in their streams. Now, most of these guys are doing streams where they are just in the corner of their screen. They're not full-blown like we're seeing right here. So obviously, the necessity of having a good, clean picture might not be as necessary for them as it is for me because my videos are all about me. I've been testing this camera out for a couple days now, and I, you know, I gotta admit, I do love the camcorder factor of it. I actually I dig that quite a bit. But there are definitely, definitely, definitely some flaws that come to this camera that I want to go ahead and discuss with you so that you're aware of what you're getting into if you decide to go with this camera. First off, it is very lightweight, very plasticky. Uh, it does not feel like something like one of my Sony A6300 cameras or whatnot. Now, of course, I have that in a cage, but that proves my point. I like heavy cameras, and those heavy cameras, you know, that means quality to me. So this is cheap, pretty plasticky. Now, this is only 1080p, but that's why the price tag was reasonable. They had an upgrade to that, which was a 4K model, and I was thinking, maybe I should go the 4K model for an extra 200 bucks, but it, when it comes down to it, I don't think that the HDMI out settings would be much better in that upgraded camera, because it released, as far as I know, uh, roughly around the same time that this did. Now, I gotta admit, if you've watched the past couple videos I've made, especially the last one where we actually did do some tests on this camera, the video was not miserable. It actually did pretty well in a streaming setting with the HDMI output. Uh, it seemed relatively okay. Right now, we're using my Sony RX100 Mark V, and I would say that this is easily comparable to that. Um, that one might be a little better, but you know what? I think it's going to be very dependent on how you feel. Some people might think that the RX100 Mark V might be a little too sharp where this might be a little too soft or something like that but honestly for streaming it serves the purposes there's some pretty major flaws in it though so i bring out the list of cons i sat down and i wrote all these guys out one by one and i'm just i i just i don't know how companies get away with this junk i really don't uh, now, maybe it's because cameras are so, uh, these cameras are older, maybe this is before the time of streaming and selfies and things like that, but you gotta admit, if you can open this up and flip the screen forward, 
Obviously, it's made so that you can do junk like this, okay? So let's get right down to the nitty gritty here. I have it turned on. Let's go ahead and hit record. All right, now we're recording audio from the inside of the camera, directly from the camera. You're looking right at me. I have control of settings, but do I? No, because when the camera is in this selfie face forward mode thing here where the screen is facing forward, I can't get to any menu settings. I can't make any adjustments. There's even a little toggle wheel down here. If I push that toggle wheel, which I can very even get to can't do anything how do i get the menus to work you have to turn the screen just enough where it flips upside down and once it flips upside down then you can get to the menu settings what idiot came up with that i mean seriously this is a a, a firmware update fix as simple as that if i can turn the camera this much and right there are my menu settings but they're upside down what's the point why on earth why on earth did that pass by our, the system's like approval of, yeah, this camera's ready to go out and be sold to half a million people. Let's see what we think here. Oh, don't worry about that. No one's going to use the menu settings when it's facing them. It's not like we're going to have a bunch of millennials using this junk. No chance. Come on, it's going to be a bunch of old people because those are the only people that are going to try camcorders. And then you've got streamers. And what do streamers do? They set up these cameras in a place where it points only at them. And when you need to get to the settings, what do you do? You don't! I mean, it even goes a step further. I can take this and I can fold this to the side of the camera and I can get the settings over here now. But I can't get them here. Hello? That's number one. All right, so in my mind, I wanted to give them a chance to write themselves, okay? So obviously, maybe this camera has been, not been touched in a while. Maybe it needs a firmware update. Okay, fair enough. I'll give, you, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Let's go find some firmware updates. So I went on to Panasonic's website. Nothing. Terrible, terrible website when it comes to their support side of things. I couldn't find anything. And when I did think I found something, there was nothing on this camera or its predecessors at all. I mean, nothing. And so I, I went and I got the thing that I hate getting the most the manual. Name any YouTube video that's ever gotten interesting over a manual. It's absolutely terrible. And they say, hey, this is not the full manual. What you got to do is you got to take a picture of this right here, and that'll take you to the full manual. So I did that, and it took me to the full manual. And on there, it gave me a link that I had to type in by hand to go and check out for firmware. And it took me to the exact same page that I found before. No firmware updates for this camera whatsoever to fix the stupid little flaw of this. I'm ashamed of you, Panasonic. Ashamed. Absolutely ashamed. All right, next one, number three. When the external mic jack is plugged in, it can't close the screen to save the screen's life. So if you consider what streamers do, what we do is we hook these up onto a place and it basically, the camera stays there permanently. We rarely ever move it. It, it, it has one purpose and that's to catch stream feed. And that's really it. We don't plan on touching it for anything else. So... I like to have the idea of plugging in a microphone. I mean, and I, and I have two ways of doing that. I have a microphone that I've plugged in, and it's a shotgun mic. Or I have this, which is a wireless system here that goes and it hooks to my microphone right here on my chest, which is super awesome. And it's really great that you can actually take this and put it on the shotgun mount, on the, on the, on the cold shoe here, which actually the cold shoe isn't half bad. It looks like it's cheap and chintzy, but it's not miserable. And on here now, I can take a wire and I can plug it in here to the mic port on the side here. I don't use this screen, rarely if ever, and maybe, maybe, I don't, maybe I don't want it. Maybe what I want to do is I want to save that screen and save power consumption. Uh, so what can I do? If I close this, it will not turn off. So what I'll do is I'll turn it over and I'll close it. But if you have a plug plugged in right here, you ain't closing it very far. Now, yes, technically it is turned off in there, which is great. But the, the, it's just I would have put this microphone port somewhere else on this camera. I mean, if you consider that the headphone port is up here, why not have, why not put uh, somewhere over on this side, somewhere, maybe even on the top, I don't care, put the function to be able to plug in your microphone somewhere else instead of having it over here. Now, once again, this is the streamer's opinion. I cannot find video anywhere on anyone discussing cameras from a streamer's opinion, except for a very few select channels which do great work. But I, I feel like the technology has come so far, we can utilize this stuff for what we need, but no one's made videos on it. All right, now we talked about the headphone jack placement. Shall we talk about setting your microphone? If you consider that this is a video camera, okay, this is not made for still pictures. It can take still pictures, though I would dare not try it. But apparently, apparently this thing is made to shoot video.
So if you think of it's made to shoot video and it's got a microphone up here and it's got options for plugging in microphones and other places, it would have a fairly easy setting to be able to change your audio functions, right? It would make perfect sense that you would be able to go in here and change your audio levels while you're working, right? Okay. So right here, if we take a look on that main screen, which you might not be able to see, you'll see my audio levels jumping like crazy there. I'm sorry, it's not in focus. It's not coming into focus. It will come into focus. I think it will anyway. I'm so sorry it's not coming into focus. All right, right there. So you see that? That thing's bouncing. If it were me, I would want to be able to push that button just, just to touch it and be able to change the audio level by touching it. What did it do? It brought up everything on the screen. So if I just touch it right there, it brings up everything on the screen except the ability to change the audio levels. I'm sorry. Shall we talk about this some more? I think we shall. So where do we have to go to make these changes? Well, you have to go into the menu, and then in the menu you have to go into the record setup, I think, and then in there you gotta go to mic level, and then in the mic level, then you gotta change the settings in here. You have to do about three or four steps to change your audio levels. I'm sorry. Now Panasonic right now is probably having a little bit of a conniption fit with this video, so they're probably ready to call me up on the phone and say, no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, there's a fix for that, there's a fix for that. You can plug in headphones into the headphone jack, and once you do that, you can make the changes to the levels. Oh, really? Let's see how this works. We'll put on some headphones here, we'll grab the other end, we'll plug it into said camera's little jack up here. Now, someone else did say that they did not like the jack up here. Personally, I think that's a great place to have it. I'm totally okay with that. Now let's open it up with the headphones plugged in. Okay. All right. I'm blowing out my ears by... Nope. Can't do that either. You guys are going to... Okay. So it's exploding right now. That thing's going absolutely ballistic because the levels are turned up super high. So I have it plugged in. Now if I hit this, still nothing. If I come here to the menu settings and I scroll through them, now there's a function to change the levels. That's better. Why wasn't it there in the first place? What on earth gave anyone the idea that this wasn't a good idea to have on the menu anyway? Because when you unplug it, it goes away. What on earth? Leave it there. Don't touch it. Leave it there. Okay, and here's the thing. Well, that can be fixed with a firmware update. Where are your firmware updates? And why wasn't this done six months ago to a year ago? This camera is like from 2014. Get together and figure this out. And now, and now, just, just, to just, just put the cherry on top of the cake or on top of the ice cream or the banana split or whatever you choose to eat. This camera will only shoot in 60 frames per second. Yes, you heard that correctly. It will only shoot in 60 frames per second and 120 in slow-mo, which you have to set separately. But here's the point, 60 frames per second. Okay, I would much prefer have the opportunity that I think would be a fairly easy fix to have 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, 29.95 frames per second, 59.96 frames per second, whatever it is, I want to be able to control that. Why on earth did you give me a camera that can only do 60 frames per second? Why even gave anyone the idea that that was a good idea? I'm not trying to film a freaking soap opera here, even though it's getting pretty darn close to it right now with how we're making this video. All right, next up, we got to talk about the placement of the on and off button. It's over here back in the corner where I have it plugged in on my system personally. It's very difficult to reach around the screen and around microphones and around whatever wiring and plugging to reach that power button. So I would put that somewhere else on the camera. I'm going to give you that. Now, not, not a lot of people were thinking of that when this was invented, and you can't exactly fix that in a firmware, so I would have placed the power button somewhere else or even put two power buttons across the camera. I know multiple cameras that have that function and, ba and battery turn on, turn off option somewhere else on the camera more than just one place. Another thing to discuss is the fact that, yes, a lot of cameras do have several function buttons. Exactly like on this camera here, I have a C2 button right here. I have a button, a C1 button up here. A lot of cameras have buttons that you can create or, 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 or tell them what you want them to do. And this camera has zero zilch, not a none zip. I think some buttons like that would have been a pretty nifty feature. And they got one step closer because in the menu that you bring up here, you can select three three options that show up here on the little menu on the side. Okay, that's fine. When you go in and you look at what options you can choose, 
they're all stupid. Just because you made this camera for consumers who probably don't do video doesn't mean you could at least go the extra mile and put some prof professional stuff in there. How about ability to change my audio? How about the chance to change my white balance? How about some other features that you need in a video camera? What do they have? Oh, do you want to pre-record before you record? Do you want to turn on and off the dinky light on the front of the camera? Do you want to be able to have a pre-fade and a post-fade so when you hit record it fades in? and you press it again and it fades out. I'm, I don't need this junk. I need professional stuff. I need when I hit a button for it to do something immediately for me. I just, I just, I'm having a day. I'm having a day. I'm sorry. I'm having a day. And finally, I truly do have to agree with another YouTuber who did take a look at this camera's power supply. This is a 5 volt DC in. Okay, 5 volt. We can charge stuff in 5 volt over USB, okay? So, that being said, why on earth is it a plug? Okay, a good old fashioned plug that we have to plug in. And the cable itself that I'm not going to show you because I dare not unplug it and lose it, literally is a USB to that plug. What, who, who, who came up with this idea? And here's the thing, there is a micro USB port on the side here. Not chargeable. What good is this thing for updating firmware? Well, God forbid you figure out where firmware goes. I just, I just, I just can't. I just can't right now. I just can't. All right, anyway, in the couple seconds that I have left here, I do want to say, I, I do actually think the camera's pretty interesting and for a streaming camera after messing with it with a few days even though my first impressions of it in my very first video were not quite uh, impressed with it i'm i'm okay with it i'm okay with it for the money i spent i think it was like 300 350 bucks i'm i'm relatively okay with it and admittedly i even enjoy using it when i'm shooting video of my dog or my wife or something like that i've really enjoyed the automatic settings in this camera camcorders do an amazing job of getting video but when I can't choose to use 24 frames per second, I just could, I could just, I could just, I could just do something I shouldn't do. And I keep trying to remind myself that yes, this is a consumer camera. People who do not make video on a day-to-day -day basis would probably suggest it. So then why on earth does every blogger on planet Earth say that this is a good streaming camera? Oh, because we like to shoot in 60 frames per second. We would prefer 60 frames per second so it meets our needs. <sighs> I don't like you people. In the end, I'm keeping this camera. Technically, in every way, shape, and form, I'm okay with this camera. Do I like this camera? Yes. But does it have some royally painful issues? Yes. Let's just say if you got bit by a bug, you gotta live with that pain until the pain goes away. I've kind of been bit by the bug, and I have to live with the pain until it goes away. And how I'm gonna make the pain go away, I'm not sure. I don't know if I'm gonna replace it at some point in time or if I'm just gonna deal with it as it is, because technically I don't need some of those other functions. But it's a, it's, a, it's a video camera. It's supposed to do all the extra functions that I'm talking about here. And it could be fixed. So much, so much of this could be fixed with firmware. And there ain't none anywhere, none. None. And when I look, when I when I when I when I when I look at the when I look at the the version of firmware that I have in here, it's 1.01. .01. It's the very first firmware, and I cannot find anything else. This camera's been in the market for years, and there is no updated firmware for this to fix some of the stupid little issues that are firmware fixable. I'm just saying, you just opened up a can of you didn't do that, and I just don't like it. <laughs> Anyway, if you have enjoyed this crazy, annoying rant, then please hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and let us know that you enjoyed me just absolutely opening up a can of rage. And the reason I'm holding the camera like this is technically right now I'm trying to choke it, and it's not choking. And technically, I think if I went to Panasonic and I told them all of this, they'd probably go, you're absolutely right. You should upgrade to one of our prosumer cameras for a thousand bucks. And truth be told, Panasonic is a great brand. I use it during my day job. I love their cameras, but what is this thing? 90% of my concerns with this thing could be fixed with just a, a, a firmware update. And yes, it takes time. And yes, they're trying to work on other cameras. And yes, we're in the middle of the corona pandemic. But when it comes down to it, this is fixable. But probably they won't do anything because this camera is technically old. Is it still good in 2020? I think it is. I think it's pretty reasonable. I think it does great. But I think that there's a lot of, a million different ways to fix some of the problems that could be so easily fixed in just a firmware update. That is going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I am done. I need to go. I need to go drink a Diet Coke and chill out here. My gosh, Netflix and cuddle. Something needs to happen here. I'll see you guys next time. God bless you all. I love you all. And just, yeah. 
I, you know what? It's not a bad camera. The link is in the description below for it. Buy it through Amazon. You actually save me. Uh, you give me a couple bucks, and it's no extra cost to you. Just, just, just know what you're walking into. Know what you're walking into. Panasonic, I do love you. I'm just hating on your product that you probably made a bunch of years ago before all this stuff came in, and you realized that streaming was going to be a thing. But I'm just saying, this could be fixed. And if you fixed it, you'd get some major cool points from me right now. Just saying. So either everyone's going to subscribe because I did a mad rant, or everyone's going to unsubscribe because this is not the usual Tim you've seen. Where's the beard? You guys are saying I have a tape-on beard. No, I shaved it off. And I miss it so much. The coronavirus is just, if I wear a mask, I can't with a beard and nurse, you know. Ugh.